United Roger. And what level can you make 3-5 miles before Papa Ross level? Level 3-5 here, we heard it was choppy. Hi and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. Now following on from my last video where I showed you how to use a Raspberry Pi with a touch screen to essentially provide a little SDR with screen and without the need for a laptop or home computer, here's another similar solution, but this time it's dedicated to tracking aircraft. Now some people call this virtual radar, but there is no radar involved in this setup at all. It uses an SDR, in this case an RTL SDR, to receive ADSB packets from aircraft flying high in the sky. It then decodes those packets and then it shows each aircraft location on a map. Now this was not a planned video. In fact, it came about because a comment on my last video mentioned about doing exactly this. And I thought it was a pretty neat idea. Now the clip shown at the start of the video was showing aircraft in real time being plotted on a map. And the air traffic radio comms that you could hear was also coming from this same setup. No data or audio feeds were coming from the internet. It was all generated locally using two SDRs and suitable antennas. The screen that the map is being shown on is an official Raspberry Pi 7 inch touchscreen with a Raspberry Pi 4 mounted to the back. The map itself is actually being viewed within a web browser running on the Pi, which means you can even look at this same map on any computer which a Raspberry Pi network is connected to. The ADSB packets, which are being constantly transmitted from aircraft on a frequency of 1090 MHz, is being received by an RTL SDR, which is plugged into one of the USB ports on the Pi 4. Now, setting up this system to display live tracked aircraft like this takes only one single line of code to get it working, which of course I will show you how to do in a moment. Now, you may be wondering where does the air traffic radio comms come from? Well, that comes from a second RTL SDR, which is also plugged into the Pi 4 that's mounted on the back of the display. And again, we're using a web page to tune the SDR to a certain frequency. Now, the SDR web app is hosted on the internet, so you do need an internet connection to access it if you do not want to host that locally, but more on that in a moment. So firstly, let me show you the display and how the Pi 4 mounts onto the back of the screen. Now the Pi is mounted on the back of the screen using four brass standoffs. There's a ribbon cable coming from the display and that plugs into the port which is on the edge of the Pi board. The screen also requires power, so you just need to plug the red and black cable that comes from the screen to the 5 volt and ground pins on the Pi's GPIO header. If you're wondering if you can use a Pi 5 instead of a Pi 4, then yes, you can but you have to remember that the display ribbon connector is different size on the Pi 5. Also, it doesn't have a 3.5 mm audio socket, so you would have to use a USB audio interface. However, the performance boost of a Pi 5 would probably outweigh having to plug something else into the USB ports. So first you need to write the Pi OS onto a micro SD card. Now you can use the official Raspberry Pi Imager software for this. First you choose the Pi type, Select the operating system, then choose the storage, which is the micro SD card, which is plugged into the card reader on your computer. At this point, you can go ahead and edit the customization settings where you can provide the Pi with a local network name and also set up a username and password. Now I kept the username to Pi and then just provided my own password. You can also configure a wireless network. So as soon as the Pi boots up, it will connect to a network connection. Of course, we'll need to have an internet connection to download the software once we get to that stage. Once it's written, pop the micro SD card into your Pi and then power it up. You can also have the RTL SDR connected at this point in time as well, so that when the software installation takes place, it knows it's there. Now, when you first power up the Pi, and if you're using the official seven inch touchscreen like I am, you may notice that the screen is upside down. Now, don't worry about that for now, we'll make a change to sort that out. Now first, using an application called Putty, which is running on my Windows computer, you'll need to SSH into your Pi. Now this is simply by providing the Pi's IP address, which you can get from your router device page if you do not know it. Once connected, you'll be presented with a terminal window. Enter your username and password to log in. Now once logged in, type this command, which is sudo space raspy 
dash config and this will show up the Raspberry Pi terminal configuration window. Now as I'll be using VNC to view the Pi's desktop from my Windows computer, which obviously makes it easier for me to show you the Pi screen, I'll now navigate to the interface option and enable VNC. Once VNC is enabled, you can now use Real VNC Client Viewer, which is running on my Windows computer, to view the Pi's desktop. Now to sort out the upside down screen issue, click the little berry icon at the top left and select Preferences and then Screen Configuration. Select the screen and then choose Invert from the menu under Orientation and then just click Apply. Now once applied, you can now reboot the Pi and when it boots up, the seven inch display should now be showing the correct way around. So once rebooted, you can now open VNC Viewer again and connect to the Pi. Open the terminal window and copy and paste this single line of code into the window and press enter. Now I'll leave a link to the GitHub page so you can copy the link perfectly. Now this script will install read SB, which is the application used to control the RTL STR and receive those ADSB packets. It will also install TAR 1090, which is a web page that shows you all of those aircraft on a map. Now remember to have the RTL SDR attached to the Pi before running that script. Once the script is finished, you can tell Read SB the location of your receiver. This is so when the map is shown on TAR 1090, it is centered around the receiver's location. You can use the sudo space read SB set location command within the terminal window just by providing your latitude and longitude coordinates. Now, assuming you have an antenna connected to the RTL SDR, which is designed for use with receiving ADSB packets, you can now open a Chromium browser, which is the default web browser that's bundled with the Pi OS. Type in the address bar 127.0.0.1 forward slash TAR1090 and then press enter. You should now be presented with a map and all of the aircraft your receiver can see should be plotted there. Now I'm using an active ADS-B antenna up on my mast and that requires a bias T to power it. It also includes a filter and an LNA to amplify those weak signals. Now there are various ways in which you can set up this hardware. You could purchase dedicated ADS-B receivers like these from Radarbox or ADS-B Exchange. These RTL SDRs already have filters and low noise amplifiers built in. So you just supply a passive antenna tuned for 1090 megahertz. Now I did make a video on how to make your own antenna and what hardware to use it with, so it might be worth checking that out if you do not wish to purchase an ADS-B antenna. Now to make things easy, we can create a desktop shortcut, so no need to keep typing that TAR1090 address in the address bar. There is also one other benefit of creating a desktop shortcut, is that we can edit it so that Chrome opens in full screen every time it's tapped. So we just edit the newly created desktop shortcut using a text editor on the Pi itself. And right after the word Chromium here, we enter dash dash start dash full screen. Once that's been changed, just save the file. Now, when we double tap that desktop shortcut, we can select execute. And then a few moments later, Chromium will open in full screen, making it easier to navigate around that TAR 1090 web page. Now, as we're using a touch screen, you can easily move around the map. To zoom in and out, you need to press the plus and minus buttons on the lower right of the screen. Now there doesn't appear to be any pinch gesture working, at least what I could see. There is a right slide out bar, which contains lots of useful information. Essentially, it's a list of all the aircraft that's been received. But to see a quick indication of how well your receiver setup is working, take a look at the messages per second value towards the top right. Now the higher the number, the more messages your setup is receiving, which means more aircraft, well, maybe. You can close the right sidebar so that the map covers the entire screen. But if you tap on one of the animated aircraft icons, a left sidebar should open. And if you're connected to the internet, TAR 1090 does its wizardry and pulls an image of the aircraft you selected. Now look at this, a cool looking helicopter. Reminds me a bit like Airwolf. Okay, so let's take a look at the VHF radio so we can actually listen to pilots. Now this might be useful if you're say looking at incoming traffic into an airport. Just like this, we can see a few planes coming into Heathrow to land. So maybe you want to listen to the tower or approach. For this example, I'm using an RTL SDR V4 for the VHF comms. And if you do the same, then you will need to install the V4 drivers, 
which is quite simple. And there's a link on the read SB GitHub page. Now only plug in that second SDR once the mapping software is running. Now I know there is a way to specify a device ID in read SB, but I didn't want to make this tutorial too complicated. If you swipe down from the top of the screen, an X should appear, which will bring you out of full screen mode. Or if you have a keyboard attached to the Pi, just press and hold the escape button. We now need to open a new tab on Chromium and navigate to this website. Now this is a website which hosts a web app capable of communicating with an attached RTL SDR. Now I would recommend going into full screen mode for this and I cheated as I used the keyboard and pressed F11. Then press the little play button on the top left of that little control panel and you should see the V4 or whichever RTL STR listed there. Select it and then just press connect. You should now see an active waterfall. You can choose the mode of modulation, which of course would be AM for aircraft and then set a frequency. You can even store presets and name them for recalling later. Now the audio output from this will go to the 3.5 millimeter audio socket assuming that you're using a Pi 4. Otherwise, if you're using a Pi 5, it will be sent to a selected audio device that's been set in the Pi OS settings. Now I changed the FFT size down as this web page will be running in the background, and I'm pretty sure it would use less CPU with a lower FFT size, although maybe as it's running in the background, it won't matter. Anyhow, I load it just in case. Now I just need to open another web browser tab and head back to TAR 1090 to show the map again. Go to full screen using F11 button on my keyboard and now we have Airband playing in the background and TAR 1090 showing all the aircraft moving on the map. So now I could just leave this set up on my desk and listen and watch aircraft as they fly overhead and miles beyond. Well, there we go, guys. That's something different and a bit of a carry on from my last video of things that we can do with a Raspberry Pi and a Pi screen that's related to radio and software defined radio. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and I'd like to say a massive thank you to my members and my patrons for supporting the channel and obviously all of you guys that watch the video. Until the next one, take care of yourselves and we we'll see you in the next video.